Have you ever planted perennials and realized, whoa, my gosh, after a few years, I, I, I won't plant this anymore. Well, let's look specifically at perennials and I'll give you seven reasons why you may not want to plant this anymore. Stay tuned. First, let me give you my rule for perennials. It's a simple rule that every perennial that you plant should double every year. Double? Well, double in size, double in the size of the plant, or double in the amount of stems flowering, or just start to spread in double the space. If your plant is doing that, that's a guarantee that that plant is happy. It's getting everything it needs. Like this Japanese anemone used to be one little plant just a few years ago, and let's just say that it's very happy here. It's the perfect conditions for it, and so it's thriving and dividing and multiplying. So keep that in mind. If your plant is just hanging on, oh, you know, I'm just surviving. That's not thriving. Surviving is not thriving. You want a plant to thrive. That's the first rule to keep in mind. Reason number seven, shade tolerance. Well, we planted these in the early years of this permaculture orchard and they did fantastic. They grew really, really well because they love full sun. This is a purple coneflower. And now that the shade has grown or the trees have increased and they've created more shade, these are hanging on. They're not thriving. They're just kind of surviving. And where there's a bit of sun, they're doing better. But otherwise, they've really almost disappeared in the orchard. So maybe you have a tree that's grown over the years. It used to be good where you had your perennials, especially sun loving, and now it's not so sunny. Consider that it can change a lot, this shade tolerance, or maybe the other way around. Maybe your plants that grew well in the shade, they really loved it, it was, they're doing great. But you decided to prune a tree a lot or even cut it down for some reason. And now they're in full sun and they're languishing. They're just not thriving. Now consider how the shade has changed and what's the shade tolerance of a plant. And you may say, I won't plant it. Be careful to evaluate its shade tolerance. A sixth reason your plants may no longer be thriving. You say, ah, yeah, I won't plant that perennial here anymore or not at all in your yard. Well, it could be that your site has changed in the drainage. Drainage is how wet or dry the soil is. And that, it's rare, but it can happen. Perhaps beavers have moved in and now you have a beaver dam somewhere and that's really raised the water table or reduced the drainage of your soil. Maybe a road has gone in and they created a damming effect by putting that road there or like this case, we put in a little pond. Well, that's raised the water table right around the pond. And now the drainage has changed. Great for some plants that love to have a moist soil, but maybe you have, a, maybe you have roses. Roses are a great example. They don't like being, having wet feet, so their drainage has changed. So maybe just the, the, uh, the drainage conditions may cause your plant to no longer thrive. And in the opposite way, maybe you were near a beaver pond or the road that was put in had good ditches put in and now it's draining the water or reducing the, the water table in your soil. Well, that's changed a lot. Now all of a sudden your plants that loved having moist soil are high and dry and they're drying out. So consider the drainage as a possible reason why, yeah, you won't want to plant that perennial there anymore. Reason number five, insect or disease susceptibility. Maybe you get oh, lilies and they get eaten by lily beetles. Hmm, is that the problem of the plant? Is it the problem of the site? What's going on? You say, ah, because they get eaten, I won't plant them anymore. Learn to use insects and disease as indicators instead of being the actual problem. 
I have some lily beetles and I like to use insects and disease to teach me, to show me, yeah, you know what, this plant isn't totally happy. Because if it was really happy, it would not have any insects or disease. So maybe I fertilized it wrong. Mm, no, maybe I watered it wrong. Mm, I don't know, maybe. Maybe the drainage isn't right for this plant. Maybe the amount of sun isn't right for this plant. Or in the case of some very ornamental plants, it's really the breeding. And especially when you get into double flowering, a plant has a limited amount of energy. And when breeding, if they favor the flowers over everything else, they can have a certain flower, but the plant is weakened because it's putting so much energy into the flower that it really ha doesn't have a very good immune system, at least at that time. So insects or disease may be a reason you don't want to plant it anymore, but it may not be just the plant or the site's problem. Take a look and check out my indicator series because insects and disease are great indicators of a problem that you may be able to change. Reason number four, maybe it's none of the previous reasons. Maybe you just say, you know what? I wouldn't plant this plant anymore because it's just not thriving. I've had these comfrey plants here for probably eight years now. And if you have comfrey and you say, oh, comfrey, it just goes crazy. Well, on our site, in our soil, comfrey does not go crazy. You want the whole reason, go see my why I don't plant comfrey anymore video. And they just, they're, they're just not right for this soil. Comfrey is a plant that needs a a robust, a strong, a much more clay content in the soil. In a beach sand, it will not thrive. I mean, this one is one of the best ones. It's actually grown a little bit, but I have full of them down in this row that look the same size as the year I planted them. They just have not doubled, not once, and certainly not every year. So if they're not thriving, just move them. Get rid of them. Don't plant them anymore. Back in the days when I was doing landscape design and landscape architecture, I remember a client who wanted a cherry tree. She said, I want a cherry tree to flower because it reminds me of my grandmother. Ah, I thought, wow, that was the first time I realized one reason people want to plant is they associate it with another person. And she wanted the plant. So, you could say maybe you associated with a girlfriend or a boyfriend and you say, you know what? Yeah, that was their favorite plant and we've split up or we've had a divorce. And, and you know, I don't want to remember that person anymore. So maybe that's why you wouldn't want to plant that plant anymore. The second reason you may not want to plant this anymore is that it's doing too well. Maybe it's become weedy. Well, this perennial sunflower is very much really well adapted to our climate, to our soil, not susceptible to insects or disease. A little bit of aphids, but it's really minimal. And it's just doing so well, thriving, not surviving, thriving and seeding and multiplying that it's trying to take over the whole of the orchard in some places. That could be a virtue. For example, we leave it in the aisles of the orchard because, hey, let it go. We're gonna either mow it or we'll roller crimp it. We'll do something and, but while it's in flower, it provides a lot of nectar, a lot of food for beneficial insects and pollinators, which is great. And we don't have to do anything to it. So that could be a positive or it could be a negative. Maybe you have gout weed and you say, yeah, you know, <laughs> I really don't want that anymore. Well, there are plants that are just so well adapted to certain conditions that they become weedy. That might be a reason why you don't want to plant it anymore. The number one reason I wouldn't plant this anymore is 
totally was totally unexpected. We test our plants and go see that video on what we do to test, how you would test a plant. So we test them for three years and it passed with flying colors. Yeah, this is a great plant. We put it in and I put in a lot, a few hundred and they've grown and they've multiplied and they've seeded and they've taken over some areas. And that was all okay. But what I never expected was that this plant grows so well, has such a massive root system that our drip tape under here, we have a plastic and drip tape, it would have the roots grow right over the drip tape and then the roots get thicker, just like a tree root. And they actually pinch the drip tape so that they cut off the water from the rest of the row. So it's a strange reason but it's one reason why I wouldn't, I don't plant this, I'm trying to get rid of it, but it's not easy because of that massive root system, which is its advantage, but it's a disadvantage in that exact spot. Thanks for watching. Intrigued? Check out the virtual tour of the permaculture orchard. Have trees already? Pruningcourse.com. Subscribe, please. Check out some of the other videos or playlists. There's more to come. Stay tuned. Thanks for watching. See you next week. Bye. Back in the days when I was doing landscape design and okay, horsefly.